Now, what's the sphericity of a cube? We know the definition of a sphericity to be 6 over dp, sp over bp, where dp is the equivalent diameter of the particle. Now, as I mentioned, there are two ways to define the equivalent diameter for a cube. Number one is the defining equivalent diameter as the diameter of a sphere having the same volume as the particle. Now, if the diameter of the sphere is taken as dSpH, then its volume is pi over 6 dSpH cube. Now, if we have this sphere having its one side to be d, then its volume is d cube. Now, by definition, if we take the equivalent diameter as the diameter of the sphere having the same volume as that of the cube, then we have this pi over 6 d d cube. So, this gives us we have 6 over pi power 1 third d. Now, this is d sphere. That's what we will call this equivalent diameter. We we'll take this to be the d p in this equation. Okay. Now, what are the other terms here? S p and v p. Now, for a cube, there are six surfaces, and each of the surface having an area of d is squared. So, for the cube, s p is six d squared, and again v p is d cube. So, all of this give the value of sphericity to be 6 over dp over sp by bp or this 6 over 1 third d and the denominator will have 6 over d. You just simply do this calculation, you end up getting some value 0 0.806. So, do remember one thing that this sphericity value of the cube does not have any term d, meaning that it is independent of the size of the cube and that is the basic definition of sphericity that a sphericity of a particle is independent of its size. It depends only on its shape. So, as I said, this is one of the way to define the equivalent diameter and get the sphericity of the particle. The second way is to, if we define the equivalent diameter as the length of one side of the cube. Again, as I mentioned, for particles, typically with regular size, the equivalent diameter can be defined in other ways. Say for the cube, it can be defined length of one side of the particle, which is d. So now if you plug in in this equation, we get 6 over d, dp equals d, and then sp over vp, again that becomes, we get the value of sp, 6d squared, over d cube will give us the value of 1. So, depending on how you define the equivalent diameter, you will get different values. Now, typically when you are dealing with regular shape particles, there are different ways to define the equivalent diameter. However, when you are considering irregular shape particles, typically it is defined in one way. For example, when you're doing the screen analysis, the equivalent diameter is defined on the basis of the screen size and that's maintained consistently. 
again as long as you are consistent you can have a value of pi s of the cube to be 0 0.806 and while calculating other properties you maintain the same definitions the calculation should not be erroneous however again the main point is to maintain the consistency based on which you define